In this video, we're going to be going over how to scan on a new Sharp MFP. On your home screen, you may see icons for network folder, email, or both. Regardless of the one that you use, the scanning interface is going to look the same. The difference is the destination, whether that be to a network folder or to an email address. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to scan to an email. The first thing we want to do is to choose our destination. In the top left area, you'll find your address book. This is where saved email addresses or destinations are located. You can also save email addresses in this window. To save a new address, select Add New on the right side menu. From here, put in the contact's name and the contact's email address. When both have been entered, select Register. To choose a destination, highlight the contact name and press OK. You will see the selected recipient populated. Since we are scanning to an email address, we can add a subject and we can also change the file name. This is a great feature because when you send a scan, whether to a network folder or to an email address, that attachment will already be named with your desired title. Again, since we are scanning to an email address, we can select options. Here you are able to add the body of text. Off to the left, you have your most commonly used features and settings. First is color mode. This can be left on auto since it will detect whether your originals are color or black and white. The next setting is resolution. Typically, this is set around 200 DPI, which is fine for text documents. When scanning photos or graphics, resolution can be increased up to 600 DPI. This will give you the max resolution for the image. Next is file format. In this menu, we can reformat our document right from the MFP. This allows you to send as a PDF, which is the most common, or if we're scanning any photos or images, you can reformat them as a TIFF or JPEG. On the 70 series, you will also have the option to send as a Word document or DOCX, an Excel document, XLSX, or a PowerPoint document, PPTX. These files then become editable when opened in the related software. Also in this menu, you can choose to encrypt your document with a password. When the encryption box is checked, you will be prompted to enter a password. The prompt comes after you hit start. When the scan is delivered, the recipient must enter the same password that was created at the device in order to have access to the attached file. Lastly, there's a great feature in here called specified pages per file. Say for example, I have 10 pages of invoices in my document feeder, and I know that every second page is a new invoice. I can select specified pages per file and specify every two sheets. So in my email or my network folder, I'm going to receive five attachments from the scan. This is a way to load everything in the document feeder at once and have the copier break it into separate attachments. Our next setting is our original setting tab. This is where you go for two-sided scanning. In most instances, you will want to select two-sided booklet. So it opens right to left. Two-sided tablet would flip on the short edge. The last tab is the Exposure tab. Here we can manually lighten or darken our document. Typically, we can leave this set to Auto, but to gain the best possible output, you can manually select the type of original that you are scanning. The last part of this video is going to be going into the Others tab to cover some of our more advanced functionality in the scanning. Job Build is a beneficial feature that allows you to combine multiple jobs into one. For example, this is most commonly used when we're scanning a job that's larger than the document feeder can hold. 
Say your document feeder holds 150 originals, but you need to scan a 300 sheet document. After selecting job build, you will load those first 150 sheets and select start. The copier will then prompt you with a read end message. You want to ignore the read end message and load your next 50, 150 sheets and select start again. You will continue to see the read end message. Once you have scanned all sheets, you will select read end. This will combine the sheets into one file that will be sent to the selected destination. If you're scanning documents that are a mix of single and double sided documents and you want to eliminate the blank pages that will be in your scan, you will want to use blank page skip. This feature will scan both sides of each sheet, but when a page is detected to have nothing on it, the copier will delete that page from the file. The last advanced setting we're going to go over in this video is mixed sized original. This is a really great feature if you have mixed sizes in your document say 8.5 by 11 and 11 by 17, but you want them to stay in their original sizes when scanned. If you select Mix Sized Original, it's going to keep them in that original size. This concludes the training video for Sharp MFP Scanning.